You've probably heard of the Book of Mormon, that enigmatic text that has captured the attention of millions of people around the world and has generated intense debate for decades. But, have you ever wondered if there is a dark side that few people know about? Today, we are going to delve into the depths of this book and uncover the truth hidden behind its pages. We will show you seven pieces of evidence that reveal the danger of this text. Before continuing, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you every time we upload a new video. Let's get started. Before we delve into the specific errors, it is essential to understand the history behind the Book of Mormon. First published in 1830, this text was presented by Joseph Smith, who claimed to have translated it from gold plates given to him by an angel named Moroni. Smith claimed that these plates contained the history of ancient civilizations that inhabited the American continent long before the arrival of Europeans. Smith described the plates as being inscribed in a language he called Reformed Egyptian, a language completely unknown to scholars and experts of the time. According to his account, he was able to translate these inscriptions thanks to a divine gift using a tool known as the Urim and Thummim, which he claimed to have received as an aid in the translation process. Since its publication, the Book of Mormon has occupied a central place in the doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as the Mormon Church. This text is considered by its followers to be a second testament of Jesus Christ, complementary to the Bible. Over the years, however, the authenticity of Smith's claims has been the subject of intense scrutiny and debate. Critics have questioned the veracity of the Book of Mormon narrative, raising doubts about the existence of the plates, the legitimacy of the reformed Egyptian language, and the translation process. Now, for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Book of Mormon occupies a central place as a sacred and fundamental text in their faith. They consider it another testament of Jesus Christ, complementary to the Bible. For Mormons, the Book of Mormon not only tells the story of ancient civilizations on the American continent that were visited by Christ after his resurrection, but also serves as a spiritual and moral guide that reinforces and expands the Christian principles found in the Bible. The book is seen as a divine revelation that provides teachings on faith, repentance, redemption, and the purpose of life being a key tool for religious teaching and practice. While some Mormons believe in the historical accuracy of the Book of Mormon, considering its accounts to represent true events, others view it primarily as an inspired work containing valuable moral and spiritual teachings. Additionally, many members of their church confirm the truth of the Book of Mormon through prayer and personal testimony of the Holy Ghost, feeling that these personal spiritual experiences confirm to them the authenticity of the book and its divine message. In short, the Book of Mormon is for Mormons an integral part of their faith, seen as a divine revelation and a guide for their spiritual and moral life. Now let's explore in detail the seven errors that call into question the validity of the Book of Mormon. First error, historical anachronisms. The Book of Mormon mentions several elements that do not match what we know about the ancient Americas. These anachronisms include the presence of horses, elephants, wheat, and chariots. The Book of Mormon makes reference to horses on several occasions. However, archaeological studies and fossil evidence indicate that horses were not present on the American continent before the arrival of Europeans in the 15th century. Horses were introduced to America by the Spanish and other European colonizers. Similarly, the text mentions elephants in Ether, chapter 9, verse 19, where these animals are described as being used in wars. Archaeological evidence shows that elephants did not live in the Americas during the period covered by the Book of Mormon. Elephants are animals that never inhabited the Americas before the arrival of Europeans. The book also makes mention of wheat in Mosiah chapter 9, verse 9, where it describes how wheat was grown. However, archaeological research shows that wheat was not cultivated in pre-Columbian America. Cereals such as corn and amaranth were the main crops in Mesoamerican civilizations. Furthermore, 
The Book of Mormon describes the use of chariots in Alma chapter 43 verse 7, where it says, And when the Lamanites saw the Nephites coming against them in their chariots and in their horses, archaeological studies reveal that war chariots, as described in the text, did not exist in the cultures of the Americas before the arrival of the Europeans. Pre-Columbian societies in the Americas did not have the technology to build or use war chariots. These historical anachronisms raise serious doubts about the authenticity of the historical account presented in the Book of Mormon, since the elements mentioned do not agree with archaeological evidence and historical knowledge about pre-Columbian America. Unlike the Bible, which has archaeological evidence supporting its veracity, the Book of Mormon faces significant challenges in matching the available historical evidence. Therefore, the lack of agreement with archaeological data and history suggests that this book is uncertain as to its historical representation. Second error, geographical errors. A significant problem in the Book of Mormon is the geography described in its pages. The text mentions several important cities and regions that, according to the account, played crucial roles in the history of the Nephites and Lamanites. However, to date, no archaeological evidence has been found to confirm the existence of these cities and civilizations. Places such as the land of Zarahemla and the city of Cumorah, described in the Book of Mormon, have not been identified on any map or through archaeological excavations. For example, the Book of Mormon mentions the land of Zarahemla in Mosiah chapter 11, verse 12. And it came to pass that Alma, the son of Alma, went out of the land of Zarahemla unto the land of Manti. Despite these detailed mentions, no concrete evidence of the existence of Zarahemla on the American continent has been located. Another example is the city of Cumorah, which is mentioned in Mormon chapter 6, verse 2. And it came to pass on the last day of the battle that a heap of dead bodies had fallen upon the earth, and the Nephites had risen in the land of Cumorah. The reference to Cumorah as a key location in the final battle and its connection to the burial of the gold plates has not been corroborated by archaeological discoveries in the region. These geographical errors raise serious questions about the historical accuracy of the Book of Mormon. The lack of correspondence between the description in the text and the available archaeological evidence suggests that the locations mentioned in the book do not correspond to real places in the history of the pre-Columbian Americas. Third error, use of biblical names. The third notable error in the Book of Mormon is the extensive use of biblical names, which raises serious doubts about the authenticity and origin of the text. Examples of biblical names in the Book of Mormon Lehi This name is reminiscent of a place in the Bible. Lehi, located in the land of Judah according to Judges chapter 15 verse 9, the biblical text says, Then the Philistines came up and camped in Judah and spread out in Lehi. Now, the use of biblical names in the Book of Mormon has several important implications. The presence of biblical names suggests that the author of the Book of Mormon may have borrowed names and terms from the Bible, rather than creating names unique to an ancient, independent culture. This may reflect a direct scriptural influence on the writing process of the Book of Mormon. Also, the use of biblical names may indicate a lack of originality in the creation of an independent world and culture. Rather than presenting a narrative with original names and terms, the text seems to incorporate already known elements from the biblical environment. Now, the recurrence of biblical names can be seen as evidence of a recent fabrication. If the Book of Mormon is considered a 19th century creation, the use of biblical names may reflect the historical and cultural context of the time in which it was written, rather than authentic antiquity. Comparing the use of biblical names in the Book of Mormon with other religious texts can offer further perspective. In the Bible, names have specific meanings and are related to the historical and cultural narrative of ancient peoples. 
names are used coherently and consistently within the biblical context. Finally, in other ancient religious texts, originality in the use of names is key to reflecting an authentic culture and context. Fourth error, doctrinal inconsistencies. A significant error in the Book of Mormon is found in the doctrinal inconsistencies between its teachings and the doctrines later established by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. These discrepancies not only create confusion, but also raise questions about the coherence and evolution of beliefs within the Mormon tradition. Examples of inconsistencies in doctrine. First of all, concept of the Trinity. One of the most prominent issues in doctrinal inconsistencies is the conception of the Trinity. The Book of Mormon presents God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost in a context that reflects, in some respects, the traditional Trinitarianism of Christianity. However, the doctrinal vision developed by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints offers a different perspective. The Book of Mormon tends to present God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost as separate entities but united in purpose. For example, in 1 Nephi chapter 11, verses 21 and 22, Nephi's vision is described where he sees God and Jesus Christ as distinct figures. Although the reference to the Trinity is not as explicit as in traditional Christian creeds, the overall picture may seem more unitary. Now, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has developed a clearer view of the Trinity, known as the Godhead, where God, the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost are seen as distinct beings with a united purpose, but not as a single substance. This understanding is different from traditional Trinitarianism, which holds that God is one essence in three persons. In second place, the nature of God. The nature of God in the Book of Mormon also presents inconsistencies with the modern teachings of the Mormon Church. In the Book of Mormon, God is described in terms that often coincide with a more traditional view of Christianity. For example, the book sometimes refers to God in ways that could be interpreted as less specific about His nature and His relationship to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. In Alma chapter 11, verse 43, for example, God is spoken of in terms that may seem more general and less detailed than in later doctrinal texts. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints holds a more developed and complex view of the nature of God. According to this doctrine, God the Father and Jesus Christ have separate, glorified physical bodies and the Holy Spirit is a non-corporeal entity. This view is not clearly reflected in the Book of Mormon, suggesting an evolution in doctrinal understanding. Now. The evolution of beliefs in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints raises questions about the continuity and authenticity of the Book of Mormon. As the Church has adjusted and developed its doctrines over time, discrepancies between Book of Mormon teachings and later beliefs can call into question the stability and validity of the text as a revelatory source. These changes in doctrine suggest a dynamism in the interpretation of teachings, which may affect the perception of the consistency and authenticity of the Book of Mormon within Mormon theology. Dear listeners, if we compare the Mormon book with the Bible, the Bible, despite doctrinal developments over time, the main teachings on the nature of God and the Trinity have been interpreted consistently in the Christian tradition. Doctrinal evolution in the Bible has been handled within a framework that maintains fundamental coherence. Therefore, doctrinal inconsistencies between the Book of Mormon and later teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints represent a significant error that raises questions about the evolution of Mormon beliefs and the authenticity of the text. These discrepancies may challenge the perception of doctrinal stability within the Mormon tradition and offer a critical perspective on the continuity and development of religious teachings. Fifth error, translation and grammar errors. A critical error in the Book of Mormon is found in the numerous grammatical and translation errors present in its first edition. These errors have been corrected in later versions of the text, but the fact that a book supposedly translated by divine inspiration should have needed so many corrections 
raises serious questions about its perfection and authenticity. First of all, grammatical errors in the first edition. The first edition of the Book of Mormon, published in 1830, contained several grammatical errors. These errors range from problems with agreement to incorrect use of verb tenses and syntactic structures. Since the text was presented as a divine translation, the presence of grammatical errors in the original version may call into question the accuracy and quality of the translation process. Some examples include sentences that do not conform to English grammatical standards and inappropriate use of terms that affect the clarity of the message. These errors were noticeable to contemporary readers and have been adjusted in subsequent editions to improve the grammatical correctness of the text. In second place, translation problems. In addition to grammatical errors, the first edition of the Book of Mormon also contained translation problems. These problems arose from the way the text was interpreted and transcribed from the supposed ancient records. Corrections in later editions have attempted to address these inconsistencies, but the need for such adjustments raises questions about the fidelity and accuracy of the original translation. However, corrections made in later editions have altered certain phrases and words in the text, raising questions about how the initial translation was handled. The need to amend the translation may indicate that the original text was not as clear or accurate as it had been presented. In third place, questioning divine perfection. The fact that the Book of Mormon has required numerous corrections in terms of grammar and translation calls into question its divine perfection. If the text was translated by direct inspiration from God, one might expect the initial version to be completely accurate and free of errors. The existence of errors in the first edition and the need for later corrections suggest a possible lack of perfection in the original translation. Therefore, the presence of errors and the need for corrections affect the perception of the authenticity of the Book of Mormon. For many, the idea of a divinely inspired text still requiring amendment can undermine belief in its supernatural origin and call into question its validity as sacred scripture. Comparing the Book of Mormon to the Bible, although the Bible has also gone through numerous translations and revisions, the original texts have been carefully preserved and translated over the centuries. Modern editions are based on ancient manuscripts, and corrections are made with the aim of maintaining the integrity of the original message. Therefore, the grammatical and translation errors in the first edition of the Book of Mormon represent a significant error that calls into question its perfection and authenticity. The need for later corrections suggests that the original text was not entirely accurate or inspired, as one might expect from a divine revelation. These problems affect the perception of the validity of the Book of Mormon and its place within Mormon tradition. Sixth error, plagiarism of the New Testament. One of the most controversial errors in the Book of Mormon is the apparent plagiarism of New Testament texts. Several parts of the Book of Mormon have been identified as matching almost word for word with the New Testament of the Bible, even though the Book of Mormon is presented as a text written centuries before the birth of Christ. This coincidence raises serious doubts about the originality and authenticity of the text. First of all, Textual coincidences. The Sermon of Jesus, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Curiously, this text is found in the Book of Mormon. In 3 Nephi chapter 12, verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Let's see another example. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it states, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now let's look at the same quote in the Book of Mormon. In chapter 32, verse 21, there is a similar formulation. Faith is the hope of things hoped for, and the assurance of things not seen. In third place, the Book of Mormon teaches that Adam and Eve's disobedience in eating the forbidden fruit was necessary, so that only then could they have children and bring joy to humanity. In contrast, the Bible specifically states that Adam's transgression 
was a sinful act of rebellion that unleashed the power of sin and death into God's perfect world. Therefore, there is no biblical support for the view that Adam and Eve could only fulfill the command to be fruitful and multiply through their disobedience to God's command regarding the forbidden fruit. In fourth place, the Book of Mormon teaches that black skin is a sign of God's curse, so white-skinned people consider themselves morally and spiritually superior to black-skinned people. In contrast, the Bible teaches that God made from one blood every nation of men, that in Christ, distinctions of ethnicity, gender, and social class are erased, and that God condemns favoritism. In fifth place, according to the Book of Mormon, about 600 years before Christ, the Nephite prophet predicted that many parts which are plain and exceedingly precious from the Bible would be taken away. In contrast, the Bible is clear that during his earthly ministry, Jesus himself constantly quoted from the Old Testament scriptures. He showed complete confidence in the fullness and accurate transmission of the Bible as it had survived to his time. Jesus declared that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away, and promised his disciples who would write the New Testament that the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. In sixth place, according to a Book of Mormon prophecy, at the time of the crucifixion, darkness would cover the face of the entire earth for the space of three days. In contrast, the New Testament accounts repeatedly state that there was darkness for only three hours while Jesus was on the cross. My friend, the contradictions between the Book of Mormon and the Bible constitute a very serious obstacle to accepting the Book of Mormon as a latter-day scripture supplementary to the Bible. The Bible came first, not the Book of Mormon. And while the Bible is organically connected to the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ by the extensive evidence of surviving manuscripts, the Book of Mormon is completely devoid of any evidence of ancient origin. Is it not reasonable, therefore, to make the Bible the standard for judging the Book of Mormon rather than the other way around? If we accept the Bible as our measure for spiritual truth, the Book of Mormon must be rejected let us be careful with the Book of Mormon. This text, considered by members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as sacred scripture, has been the subject of intense scrutiny. As we have researched and analyzed its contents, we have discovered a number of significant issues that call into question its authenticity and reliability. It is essential to approach any text that presents itself as divine revelation with a critical and analytical spirit. In the case of the Book of Mormon, the evidence suggests that it is full of errors and contradictions that undermine its credibility as a source of spiritual and historical truth. It is therefore important to exercise careful and informed judgment when studying and considering texts that have a significant impact on religious beliefs and practices. And so we come to the end of this video. Thank you for being part of our channel. God bless you abundantly. Until the next video.